Kung Fu Panda is not only a very important series to me, but also one of the best animated movie series of all time. The second movie will forever be one of my favorites. The soundtrack, animation, and villain are so perfect. Nearly no movie hits quite like Kung Fu Panda 2. That's not to discredit the first movie. It is an incredibly enjoyable film, and Tai Lung is one of the dopest animated creatures ever. Both have incredible messages, characters, and noodles. The fourth Kung Fu Panda was announced a few years ago, and I was skeptical. In this age of filmmaking, 99% of the movies are made because companies want to make money, not because someone has a great idea slash story. It's super sad, but it makes sense. For some reason, movies cost half a billion dollars nowadays, so companies don't want to risk that money on a new franchise. I was worried Kung Fu Panda 4 was just going to be another movie on the cog of the corporate machine, very similar to another fourth entry in a very good popular children's animated movie series, obviously being Toy Story 4. My mom and I feel as though Toy Story 4 was unnecessary. I bring her into this because she has way stronger feelings about this than me. She would watch Toy Story 1 and 2 with us on repeat whenever we were toddlers. My entire family was excited for the release of the third one, and it was a tearful, perfect ending to the series. Except it wasn't the end, because even though the series had a perfect ending, we need a fourth one because Disney loves money. Now, we don't necessarily think that TS4 is a bad movie, but we never want to rewatch it again because it's useless. Let's bring it back to the main topic of the video. To look at my opinions of Kung Fu Panda 4, we need to ask a question. What do I think of the finality of Kung Fu Panda 3? Contrary to Toy Story 3, Kung Fu Panda 3 doesn't definitively conclude the series. In all honesty, I don't even really like Kung Fu Panda 3 all that much. When making a new entry in the Kung Fu Panda series, it's pretty hard. Nearly impossible, in my opinion. The first two are almost perfect movies. Anything below an 8 or a 9 out of 10 is going to feel terrible in comparison. But that aside, looking at Kung Fu Panda 3 on its own, it's fine, I guess. The message is okay. I love seeing more old-ass turtle, and J.K. Simmons is just one of the best voice actors ever. My biggest two complaints in the movie are the Panda Village and the soundtrack. In a vacuum, Kung Fu Panda 3 soundtrack is good, great even, but I had insane expectations because the second movie is one of the best scores of all time in my opinion. Kai's theme is awesome and I love it, but I also kind of hate it. It's a remix of I'm So Sorry by Imagine Dragons, which is cool. I'm the biggest Imagine Dragons fan there is, but I don't like it when movies do this kind of thing, especially in this world. It just takes me out of the immersion and makes me feel weird. Now the village. I decided to talk about this after the score because I don't feel like I have to defend this one as much. No one likes the village. I don't think Kung Fu Panda 3 was a good end to the series, and I was wanting a Kung Fu Panda 4. Okay, six pages into my script and I'm finally getting to my opinions on the actual topic of the video. So reviews are saying that this movie's bad, unnecessary, and a cash grab. I disagree for the most part. It is obvious that this movie was indeed a cash grab. The Furious Five aren't in it and they explain it in such a shitty way. They clearly just didn't want to hire the actors to record lines. I love that the story is about Poe and his successor, but it would have made more sense to have them show up at the beginning and announce that they were going to leave to do stuff. The way they handled it felt more corporate, especially at the end. If you've seen the movie, then you get me, I think, maybe, kind of, sort of. My girlfriend calls this movie a side quest, and I kind of agree, but not really at the same time. It definitely feels like a side quest, but it totally isn't. It's a pretty important story to Poe. He's moving on from the Dragon Warrior title, and that's a big deal. I think the reason why it felt like a side quest might be because of how poor the villain is. She is animated and voice acted well, but she just doesn't have a backstory. Her motivation is so stupid. Spoiler alert, I guess. But her motivation is that she's small and no one would train her. Even though she's as tall as one of the strongest kung fu masters, and she's massively taller than one of the Furious Five. I actually rolled my eyes when she said that. Maybe they cut the Furious Five because they didn't want Mantis to be there whenever they showed her motivation. Tai Lung had great motivation. He was told since birth that he was going to be the dragon warrior. Then whenever he was the goat, the turtle told the leopard that he wouldn't be the dragon. Understandably so, this hurt Tai Lung a lot, and he took it out on his dad. Shen made a dope invention, and his parents stopped liking him because it was a bit dangerous. This made him understandably upset because it sucks when people don't like your creations, especially when it's your parents. Even Kai had good motivations. Uguay was besties with him, and then he sent Kai into the spirit realm whenever Kai learned how to steal key. He was betrayed by his best friend. And then the chameleon was... A little small, I guess. That's as deep as it goes. All in all, she was pretty cool. Her motivations were shit, but she did cool stuff with her powers. I wish they showed how she got Tai Lung's image at the beginning of the movie instead of showing that she just had Tai Lung's image. Spoiler alert, the first scene of the movie shows the chameleon fighting some guys while in Tai Lung's form. That's cool and all, but it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't show her threat level at all, it just shows the audience something that they know. It would have been much more interesting to show a scene where she tricks Tai Lung into getting close and she copies his form. I know that's not the best idea ever, but it's better than what we got. My idea brings good questions like, does she gain his powers too? Which would be answered later in the movie. 
the only question the opening brings up is, how the fuck did she touch Tai Lung? He's been dead for years and imprisoned before that. Okay, we've talked about Tai Lung a lot, so I'll talk about him. I liked him. It was nice seeing him fight again, and I liked his interactions with Poe. It shows that he slightly grew as a character while he was dead. Brian Cranston is in the movie a lot, and I like it. His panda character has amazing chemistry with Ping, and I love their side story. Maybe they could have put more chameleon stuff in there instead of dual dad shenanigans, but I thought they were funny, so it's whatever. I actually liked Aquafina's new character. I was worried she was going to get a little bit annoying. I like Aquafina, but she's just been in so much recently. I was just worried that this movie was going to be what put me over the edge, and I was wrong. I love how Zen was animated, and even though the twist was obvious, it was done in a good way. She is a pretty good successor, especially since Poe was a nothing noodle shop guy before learning Kung Fu. At least she has fighting experience before becoming the Dragon Warrior. I mentioned the animation a couple times, which is warranted in my opinion. I don't think it's as good as Puss in Boots The Last Wish, but it's probably the best animation in the series so far. I like the art direction of the second movie the best because of how dark it is, but objectively the animation in Kung Fu Panda 4 is the best. There's this really cool silhouette fight about halfway through the movie. It reminds me of when anime go black and white in certain fights. Also, the choreography was great, but that's a given for the series. Okay, one more thing before I say my final words. They did that fucking music thing again. They remixed Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. It sounds cool, I guess, but it just feels weird to me. I I bet it would be natural if you've never heard those songs before. It just makes me feel weird when movies do this. I I don't know what the word is for it, if there even is a word for it. I I just don't like it. So should you go see Kung Fu Panda 4? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you like the series, then you're gonna like this. If you like Kung Fu Panda 3, then you'll love this. I personally believe that's a lot better than Kung Fu Panda 3. There weren't any moments that made me bored or begging to get to the next scene, like the Panda Village. Also, there's no way I can call a movie where a Kung Fu master fights a dragon monster in the sky during a blood moon bad. Was it unnecessary? I mean, sure, but at the end of the day, most sequels are pretty unnecessary. This is a valid sequel to Kung Fu Panda. It isn't perfect like 1 and 2, but it's definitely better than the third one. And unlike how I feel about Toy Story 4, I would actually like to see more from this franchise. Go see it if you're a fan. You'll at least like seeing Tai Lung in the beautiful animation. Kung Fu Panda 4, 7 out of 10.